So, uh, Sayana Acharya, uh, the great scholar who commented on all the four Vedic Samhitas, he explains that uh, the first name is the Nakshatra Nama. Nakshatra Nama, Guhyam Nama, Prakasham Nameti, Trini Namani. The first name of the child was the Nakshatra Nama. It was based on the Nakshatra. And even today you have that uh, tradition of giving names as per the Janma Nakshatra. The second name was a Guhya Nama or a secret name. This name was known only to the parents. Only to the parents. So this was like a very personal name. Just ghar mein bulate hain, you know, the uh, name only for use by the parents and close uh, family. The third name was the Prakasham Nama. Prakash means manifest or, you know, which is visible. So this was the name which was known to everybody. They had two names. One was a Nakshatra name. One was an, uh, a public name or a Prakash name. And the fourth name, Sayana Acharya says, is uh, like Somayaji. You have people name uh, with the last name Somayaji even today. Uh, Neelakantha Somayaji was a great uh, uh, astronomer in the Kerala School of uh, Mathematics. So, uh, in the Vedic Samhita, a mantra talks about four names of the same person. And mind you, these are all four personal names. These are not a surname or a, or a patronym or a matronym. These are all four personal names. So, in Vedic times, people had up to four names. And in the Puranas, you see many Sahasranamas, Vishnu Sahasranama, Lalita Sahasranama, or uh, Shiva Sahasranama. So, uh, from the Vedic times, people had four names. In the Puranas, we have thousands of names of a deity. And India is a, Bharat is a land which had a very rich culture of naming. We had several types of names. For example, we had a given name. Now, there is another mantra in the Rig Veda which talks about three names of the same person. It's uh, Trasadasyu, Paurukutsa, Gairikshita. Three names of the same person. And these are three types of names. The given name, Trasadasyu. He from whom the Dasyus have fear. He, he of whom the Dasyus are afraid. That is, that is Trasadasyu. That was the given name of uh, uh, a person. Similarly, Rama, the hero of uh, Ramayana is a given name. Then people had patronyms, a name which meant son of such and such person. For example, Paurukutsa. So Trasadasyu is the son of Purukutsa, hence he is called Paurukutsa. And Rama, as you know, is the son of Dasharatha. So his name is Dasharathi. That's the patronym. Then people had another name which was the Gotra name. For example, Gairikshita or Vatsyayana. Vatsyayana means a descendant of Vatsa. Vatsasya Gotrapatyam. Vatsyayana. The, a descendant, not the son, but a, a later descendant of Vatsa is Vatsyayana. Similarly, Katyayani. Katyayani is the name of uh, Durga, as you know. And Katyayani means she who is uh, born in the lineage of Rishi Kata. So there's a Gotra name and then they were also matronyms. So we had a society which took pride in its mothers. We had a society where uh, the mother was considered greater than the father and people were known by the name of their mother also. Uh, I think sometime back, uh, I don't know when it was, but uh, I believe some years ago when Indi when Indian team played a cricket match, they had their mother's name on the jersey or some uh, something like that. So we have that culture of name being named after the mother uh, we have Sanjali Bhansali who takes pride in the fact that his middle name is from his mother and we have had this for a long time so Rama was also known as Kausalya the son of Kausalya similarly Shatrughna and Lakshmana were both known as Saumitra son of Sumitra so we had several types of names and uh, in the Grihya Sutras uh, there are elaborate rules given on how to give a name. Uh, some of them are summarized as a name should have even number of syllables for a boy. So it could be two, four or six. For example, Daksha has two syllables. Uh, Brahma Datta has four syllables. Uh, and for girls, the recommended number of syllables was odd, three or five. 
And then they also said how a name should start, what all it should contain and how it should end. It was said in the Grahya Sutra, Sutras, it is said that a name should start with a sonant or a voiced consonant. It should contain one semi-vowel, one, one or more semi-vowel sounds, for example, yara, lava. And it should end in a visarga or a long vowel sound. For example, my son's name is Niramaya. In Sanskrit, it would be Niramaya. Four syllables, ni, ra, ma, ya. Begins with N, a sonant, ends in a visarga, ya. And my daughter's name is Nilaya. Odd number of syllables, three, ne, la, ya. Starts with N, again a sonant. And both of them contain semi-vowels. Niramaya has ra and ya, and Nilaya has ya. So, if I were living in the times of the Grihya Sutras, my name would have my names would have been compliant. Or, or you can say they're still compliant as per the Grihya Sutras. Interestingly, deity names were not used directly to give a name to a child. So people would not name somebody Shiva or Rama, but they would call the person Shivadatta, given by Shiva, or Devadatta. Devadatta is a very popular name in the Mahabhashyam, or uh, Yajnyadatta. We had a great uh, polymath scholar, unfortunately not many Indians know about him. Uh, his name was Ambika Datta Vyasa. And his name was Ambika Datta, given by the mother. Uh, Ambika, name of uh, goddess, you know. So, deity names were usually not given uh, directly, but somebody would say this is given, he, he, he as a boy or she as a girl is given by Rama or Shiva or a Deva.